hey guys welcome back to another video my name is Shamira and in this video we are going to be doing a power hour video so you'll spend one hour with me shadowing a medical coder kind of um, but yeah I hope you guys enjoy the video make sure to give it a thumbs up and let's jump right into it All right, you guys, so we are going to get started with my power hour. I do have to get on a meeting in about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to just try to weed through some of these pediatric um, hospitalist charge sessions that I have to do. Um, with this specialty, I don't have to physically code anything except for procedures but i do get a lot of their enms um, sometimes their diagnosis or the enm level that they choose is not correct for the place of service that the patient um, has so let me just start going through a few of these and my very first one the error that i'm getting is for 99238, which is a inpatient discharge, and it's saying that I should be using the same day admit and discharge. So I'm gonna see what exactly was already billed. And it looks like we're billing for a newborn admit and a discharge on the same day. So I will have to figure out where that charge is for the admin and then change this discharge to a no charge code saying that the patient was seen by another group or specialty. No, actually, I will do the no charge just saying that there was another charge billed on the same day by the same specialty. Billing for... And then I have to go into this account to find that admit charge that was posted and do a correction to a 99463. I will pull up my session details and put in a comment that I'm changing for same day admit and discharge. Okay, so she was, it's showing that she was admitted on the fourth, discharged on the fifth, but it depends on when the patient was seen by the provider. So if the provider didn't see the patient until the fifth, we can't bill the admin on the fourth. So I'm just going to check their note. And yes, it looks like they seen them on the fifth. So this is correct. And I'm going to go ahead and submit that and then I'll submit my no charge. So that one is done and I'm moving on to my next patient. I have a no charge by a teaching physician and a lot of times with our teaching physicians and pediatrics, it's because the resident saw the patient and the teaching position wasn't there. So we have to do a no charge. So I'm just going to look at the resident's note and see if the teaching position left any attestations or comments that they did see the patient and they did not. So I'm going to change its service provider to the resident. I'm gonna keep the building provider as the teaching position I'm going to add my GC modifier indicating that um, a resident was involved. 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to resubmit it. But I do wanna check to see what was billed for the next day. Um, because if the teaching physician did bill for the admit the next day, which she did, I'm going to put in a no charge for that date. And I'm only doing that because um, the teaching position would have dictated a progress note. And our progress notes, we usually use subsequent charges. So because they're using an admit charge on a progress note, I like to put in a no charge for the same day even though we are billing a charge for that day, it's just going to satisfy my missing charge report. So we have to run reports looking for missing charges. And this admit code that they use, the 99460, will not satisfy a progress note. So I'm gonna satisfy the progress note with this no charge code, if that makes sense. Um, and now I'm just gonna put review no charge codes. I'm going to snooze that meeting alert because we have our meeting in 15 minutes. So I will um, join that. Um, let me see. What's our next one that we have? Um, it says that my 232, 99232, which is a subsequent level two is hitting against this discharge. So I'm going to have to see when the patient was discharged. She was discharged on the sixth. So the subsequent will need to be changed to a no charge code. Alrighty, so let me go find it. And I'm just adding that I'm billing for the discharge. Okay, and I think that her place of service changed. So the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. So on the sixth, she was switched to inpatient. Okay. And then I just added that I changed the subsequent to a no charge code, so I'll be able to let that one go. Um, my next one, we have a newborn admission, 99460. I guess I can go over there. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it because you guys are all the way over there. But these are our newborn codes and we're looking at 99460. And the reason why I have it here to review is because they use diagnosis code 082 and you cannot use chapter 15 codes on um, the newborn records. So I have to just change this to Z3801. 082 is for a normal cesarean delivery and the diagnosis code that I switched it to is Z3801 for a single delivery by um, cesarean. And then this one should be good to go, but I'm just gonna see if we also build for um, the attendance at delivery and we did not. So my comment that I'm adding is changed primary diagnosis code and I'm moving on to my next one. Um, let me see, we have an error because we're billing a consult 99253 and this pair does not accept consult codes. So I have to review 
the documentation for this consult. And there was a teaching physician involved. So I have to change the service provider to the resident and add my GC modifier. And then I'm going to go ahead and level this note to get my, um, oh, hang on. It's an outpatient consult. No, she is inpatient. So I need to correct the place of service to inpatient. And then I'm going to go ahead and level this EM so that way I can get the hospital admit code that I need. And then after I do this, I'll probably go ahead and join the meeting. Okay, we have context, we have past medical history. We have modifying factor. Severity. I only need one more. Chiari malformation. Let me Google that. Hmm. Well, I got my fourth one for location. So we have four for HPI. I have medical history, family history, social history. So I have three for that. Review of systems, I have constitutional, ENT, eyes, respiratory, cardio, GI, endo, genitourinary, muscular. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I could probably pull one more. Let me just see. Dental, ears, belly, hearing. We need eyes. I have. ENT, oh, I have eyes, respiratory, cardio, GI, GU, endo, musculoskeletal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I still come up with nine. Um, Okay, so we have nine, and because we have nine, we don't have a complete. They didn't say all others negative, so we're going to have a detailed history. My exam. I have vitals. ENT. Respiratory, cardio. GI. Muscular, psych, neuro. So for my exam, I have eight. So that's comprehensive, which it's not going to give me a higher level because it's comprehensive because the, um, what is it called? History was detailed. So in order to stay at like a high level, you need to have comprehensive for both of these. So because I know I have detailed and comprehensive, I really don't even have to level the um, what is it called? The medical decision-making part, because even if this came out to be a high, my history was detailed and my exam was comprehensive and you have to have all three. So no matter what, it's going to be a 99221. So I'm going to go ahead and use that.
Okay. And then my comment just says that I reviewed document, consult documentation. Insurance does not accept consults. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and push that one through. I'm going to change my department really quickly to OB because I have an OB meeting that I'm getting ready to go into. So I want to check to see if I'm holding anything to review with my team. That's holding for pathology, 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 pathology. Um, we're waiting to hear back to see who is billing for this delivery. Okay, so she added that. Um, let me see, what about this one? Pathology. Okay, so I am not holding anything for questions. Usually our meetings only take about five minutes if nobody has anything, even less than that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and join and then I will play music in the background so you guys aren't like listening in on the conversation. And I do not have to be on camera for this, so ne neither of us do. So I'll just wait for them to join and continue to work. Oh, here they come. Okay, that's done. Um, so let me just switch back so I can finish those peaks. 
charges I was working on and then we can move over to OB. Um, okay, so I have a no charge that they entered with their discharge. And usually this um, nurse practitioner, whenever she does multiple signatures, she will do a no charge to go along with the second signature that she did. So um, all I'll do is I'll change that this was a single live born infant delivered by cesarean because they had Z38 too, which was unspecified. Um, what exactly does it read? It reads single live born unspecified place of delivery, but if it was a C-section, I doubt they're doing that at home. So um, I'll go ahead and change the primary diagnosis code. And I cannot say primary diagnosis code. And then again, I'll change the primary diagnosis code. And it looks like this is her subsequent day discharged on 5-10. And now we have a no charge by a teaching physician again. So I'm gonna go check to see. This was for a consult that she did not attest to. So I'm going to change the service provider to the resident that saw the patient, add my GC modifier. Even though it's a no charge, I don't need to add the GC modifier, but it's a good habit to remember to put on the GC modifier whenever a resident is involved. Um, and then we have another um, no charge by the teaching physician but we did go for the admit the next day when she saw the patient. So for the seventh, I'm going to add, actually, I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna add the resident because she's going to be referring to their note. And then I'm gonna add GC modifiers to both charges, the no charge. And then I'm going to add another no charge for the eighth by my provider and use the same diagnosis because again I do that second no charge for the next day because they're using a progress note but they're billing an admit code so I'm gonna go ahead and submit that I have another teaching position, no charge. And that is for the seventh again. I'm gonna see if we build on the eighth. So, and we did, so I'm gonna do another no charge and change my change my um service provider to the resident and which resident was it okay Alrighty, my next one, I have an error because they used another chapter 15 code for cesarean delivery. So I'm just gonna make sure it was a single live born, and it was. So I'm just gonna say that I changed the primary diagnosis code. These ones are very, very easy to get through, so it does not take me long. Um, I know I've told you guys previously that I have to do 20 charges an hour. So that includes these no charges that I'm submitting. So 
Uh, I, I don't have to code these notes. Again, I only have to review their procedure codes, but like the no charges, the ENMs, and things like that, um, I rarely have to code them, except if I have to like change the code, like I did for that console. I had to level it out because they chose a 99253, and that's detail, detail, low. So actually, I could have just crosswalked that. Um, because detail detail low is the same thing as a 99221. So I really didn't even have to um, level it, but I just wasn't sure, so I leveled it anyway. Um, let me see. Okay, so we have a no charge for this console and no attestation. So I'm going to change the service provider, add my modifier. I guess I can just go over here and see if they build something the next day, but I doubt it. With these consults, the patient is usually only seen once. So let me see. Yeah, there was nothing built the next day, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, we have another teaching position no charge for an H and P this time. So I'm going to change the service provider, add my modifier. And because it's an admit, I'm pretty sure we would have billed the next day, which would have been the ninth if the resident saw them on the eighth. Um, let me see. Yep. Right here is my admit on the ninth. So I'm going to do a no charge for the ninth. Alrighty, next we have another no charge, HMP on the 8th and an admit on the 9th. So the same thing. And the resident was this one. Next up, we have another chapter 15 code on the newborn record. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. Let me just make sure it was a single live born. Next, we have another no charge by a teaching physician. Um, let me see for the eighth. which would be this one right here. And no attestation. So change my service provider, add my modifier. Three more to go. Um, no charge for the eighth. Let me see what it says. Okay, so we're billing for a hospital admit and discharge on the same day, and I have an error that a new patient admit was billed uh, a day later after the patient was discharged by the same specialty. So it was a new patient ENM to the office, and because the pediatric specialty had already seen the patient in the hospital when they were admitted and discharged they can't bill a new um a new patient enm because the patient already we already established care for this specialty so the 99381 that they submitted i'll change to 99391 correct for established and then my admin and discharge should be able to go out just fine. All right, I have two more 
teaching position, no charges. So let's see. Um, check this one out. I have no attestation for the ninth. Did we bill anything on the 10th? We did, so. Alrighty, I'm gonna put in and I reviewed no charge codes. All right, one more. Five nine, we have the admit on five ten. Alrighty, so I am finished with my P department. Now I can switch over to OB. And this is my main specialty that I spend most of my day in. Um, what do I want to start with? So how I sort my work is I like to sort it by the place of service and then the date of service, and then the patient's name. So for office um, procedures or office charges, I believe we have to, I think, um, wait, why is it ascending? I want it to switch to the other way. Okay, I think I fixed it. Okay, good. Um, what was I saying? I like to sort by place of service, then service date, and then patient's name. It was just a little weird because for some reason, the newest date, I think it was like in ascending order where ascending is like from today's date back, but I want the oldest date to the newest date, if that makes sense. I think that's descending order I always get those mixed up but anyway um so it looks like I have an NST that I can review um, okay so actually I already looked at this one um, in my provider's documentation she no he had said that the patient will be getting an NST and uh, every Monday an NST and biophysical profile every Thursday. So I guess this one was a Monday, so they would have done the NST only. So I can go ahead and build this NST out. Usually what happens is they'll submit the 5-9 025 for NST and then they'll build the biophysical profile separate. I think it's the 78619. And there's actually a code that bundles both of them. 78618 is what I would have to change the 76819 to. And then my NST code, the 59025, I would switch to a no charge. Okay. So now I just have a bunch of prenatal visits from yesterday that probably have the weeks of gestation as the primary diagnosis code and it cannot be primary. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over those and just go straight into looking for some office procedures. Um, let me see. Where's this one? Okay. All 
Okay, so let's just run through these office procedures really, really quick um, before my power hour is over. So I have an IUD insertion and my codes are already picked. Um, they already have the IUD insertion and the drug, the Mirena. So all I have to do is review the documentation. And everything went well, successful procedure. So I'm gonna go ahead and resubmit this. I have another NST by um, the payer is United Healthcare Community Plan. So they allow us to add the TH modifier to our ENMs. And I do not need modifier 25 on my NST, but I will do modifier 25 on the ENM. Um, and it looks like we only have an NST, so I don't know why we're billing an ENM. I'll have to look and see why the patient came in. Okay, so she's having contractions. And the NST was non-reactive. How many weeks is she? So let me look at her appointment really quick to see why she came in to the office. It looks like they may have done a biophysical profile. So let me check. They did. So remember I just got done saying that um, they will bill for the biophysical profile only and then submit the NST separate. So this is a good example where they did that. So I'm gonna change that to a no load and then I wanna get rid of the e &M that they were billing because we already billed one the day before and this was not a routine prenatal. Patient had came in for contractions and we only did the biophysical profile and the NST only. So we cannot bill an e &M. Um and let me just update these diagnosis codes. Billing for BPP with NST. And then I'm going to correct that biophysical profile that they billed and change that to 76818. Or BPP with NST. Okay, so that one is done. I'm not sure how far we are in this power hour, but I think I might have about 20 minutes left. So that's why I'm trying to just do procedures instead of diagnosis only. Okay, so it looks like I have another one where, uh, let me do all notes, um, where we have an NST and an ENM. They actually have the correct modifiers, our TH for United Healthcare Community Plan and 25. Um, because a separate minor procedure is being built on the same day. So let me just see. The patient is here for her routine prenatal. So we do keep the ENM. And how many weeks? 34 weeks. I'm going to attach her LMP and review the NST documentation. Yeah, I just checked to make sure it was recording because sometimes my camera will cut off if there's too much storage and I will be so upset if I'm doing all this talking and it's not recording. 
that has happened before so yeah all right and then I'll just put that I reviewed the NST and that one's good to go Okay, I just did a quick one where I just had to add the week suggestion. Alrighty, now we have a prenatal visit, and it looks like we have an NST that they did. So, let me review that. And the reason for it was an irregular fetal heart rate. It looks like they were unable to determine the baseline. All right, so let me see how many weeks she is. And then this patient has commercial insurance. So I'm not sure why we build an EM. Um, let me go back to it really quick. Yeah, this ENM needs corrected to the 0502F. And let me just make sure her other visits are correct because sometimes they bill ENMs when we need to bill um, the global code. Okay, so her commercial insurance was effective March 1st. So anything after March needs to be the 0502F. Um, and let me just go in and check those notes quick. Okay, so the 21st, okay, so this needs changed. Okay, so that's why they didn't update the coverage and that's why they build like that. Child. Okay, now that I have the coverage, I wonder if it'll automatically flip it. Hang on a little bit. 
me. Yep, it did. Okay, so I changed that one. Then we have the fourth. This one needs corrected as well. Do the O five O two F. Okay, so prior to March first, um, let me see that all the other charges were filled correctly. Why does it say our insurance is inactive? My goodness. All right, next one. Okay, the rest of them should be good. Okay, now back to what I was looking at. I was looking at this NST for irregular heart rate, and I think I'm done. And let me just make sure that I did change that to the 0502F. Okay, so I'm finished that one. Now I have a Nexplanon removal and insertion to review. So let me just look at the documentation. Yep, good to go. And I think that was my last procedure. Yes, that was my last office procedure. Now I have inpatient to review. My outpatient charges, I think, are um, more within charge like than my inpatient stuff. So I'm on the 5th for inpatient, and I'm on the 7th for outpatient. So I'm going to work on inpatient. And then that's probably where we'll close out this video for our power hour. Um... Let me see, what do I want to start with? Okay, so my first delivery, it looks like I have because I was waiting for the post delivery charges to drop. I didn't want to send out the delivery and then the post delivery charge, which was her discharge, um, was still sitting behind. So I did hold it. And let me just open up the chart so I can see 
how many things I need to put 99024 in for because I think we build global. Um, we build for delivery and postpartum. So I need to look at five, seven. Nine nine zero two four and five eight nine nine zero two four and let me just look at the documentation diagnosis that I'm going to use is V thirty nine point two for that one which reads encounter for routine postpartum follow up. I'm going to use that for both of them and my comment included in delivery. And then I have my last one, which is the night 99024. I'm going to look at the discharge summary and usually the discharge summary has more diagnoses on it because they go by um, our delivery notes. So let's see what we have going on here primary c-section gestational hypertension positive gbs anemia during pregnancy um fetal heart rate non reassuring and let me see what else do we have my weeks of gestation and it's a Single live born. So that's it for that one. And I'm going to go ahead and send all these out. Okay, so that was just one delivery. How much time are we at? Oh, we got about five minutes. Okay, so um, let me see. What else can I share? Hmm. I guess let's look at this delivery here. Okay, so this delivery was not by my midwife. So um, I think we'll just have to, well, I don't have to, but um, I'll just put in the no charges for the, um, what do we call that? You know, you have the post delivery. So I guess like the pre delivery charges where the patient was admitted and, um, maybe there was like subsequent days before she delivered so for this case patient admitted on the fifth and she delivered on the seventh so my midwife seen her on let me see the fifth and the sixth so i'm going to go ahead and put in my no charges for those two days because in your books they tell you that what do they say exactly Delivery services include admission to the hospital, the admission history and physical examination, management of uncomplicated labor, vaginal delivery, or cesarean delivery. So when you are reporting for the deliveries, you do not bill for the admission codes prior to delivery, unless your specialty is not or your medical group is not billing for the delivery. Um, which I don't know if you guys will have scenarios like that, but we have them sometimes. Okay, so we have IUGR, which is 035930. No. 
030. I know there's a five in it. 036. 593. Zero. Okay, so my camera just cut off. Um, I was running out of storage, but this time I actually heard it click off. So I'm going to do this delivery and then we are going to be done um, for this video. So I have a clip catheter that was placed. Let me make sure I buy my midwife. And it was. So we can bill for that. We're going to bill 59200 insertion of cervical dilator. You can't bill it for the day that she delivers, but you can bill it prior to her delivery. Um, and then the next day, the catheter had came out and my midwife had seen her. So, that is it for this. Hang on, let me see. So it looks like somebody else might have already billed for this catheter. Let me see because we've seen them first. So let me see if the h &P has any documentation for a catheter being placed. I don't see how if we placed it first. Okay, yeah, they did put it in first. In the HMP note, they have it. So, I can't bill for mine because we already billed for one on the same day. So, I've just changed mine to no charge. And then, I'm going to put a note that these are included in delivery. All right, you guys. So, that is it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. A full hour of my workday. Um, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.